Good morning, everyone. My name is Kevin Galetz, and I'm an Industry Education Council coordinator working with Regina District Industry Education Council and Sunwest School Division. It's my pleasure today to introduce Raul Garcia, who is the Director of Operations for the Saskatchewan Rattlers of the Canadian Elite Basketball League. Raul will describe his role as Director of Operations with the team and the career path he has taken to get to this position. Just a reminder before we begin the session, uh, that it will be recorded and put on the RDIEC YouTube channel for you or anyone else to view in the future. And I'd like to request that any students who watch this presentation to go to the website www.rdiec.ca and complete the student survey that can be found in the top, near the top of the home page. You get your name in for a monthly draw of $50, uh, $50 gift card. Again, the website is www.rdiec.ca. Once again, welcome Raul. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be here uh, and excited to talk a little bit about my role with the Saskatchewan Rattlers who play out of the Canadian Elite Basketball League. Uh, so we're a full-fledged professional league. We've been operating uh, since 2018 with our first games happening in 2019. Uh, we were lucky enough to be the inaugural champions in 2019. Uh, which was a special moment and, and we got to win in front of our home crowd here in Saskatoon at the Sastel Center. Um, so like you said, my name is Raul Garcia. I'm the director of operations for the club um, and we operate uh, right out of downtown Saskatoon, uh, about a block away from the Midtown Mall here. Uh, so I, I thought it would be useful to talk a little bit about the league uh, since it's, it's a fairly new league. Uh, maybe not everybody knows about it. Uh, so the league's a league for Canadians by Canadians. We have a very strict uh, Canadian mandate uh, where 70% of our rosters must be made up of Canadian players. Uh, we operate in the summer months and this allows us to bring home uh, a lot of these elite Canadian athletes that are playing either overseas in some of the top leagues there in Spain, France, Sweden, Germany, you name it, or playing in the NBA G League, which is the, uh, I guess, the development league for the NBA. Uh, as the league has progressed, we're now going into our third season. We keep seeing the talent level of our athletes uh, continue to rise, which is very exciting. Uh, and now we're having guys who have been, you know, drafted by the NBA teams or have played NBA minutes that are, are starting to play in our league as they see it as a, a useful way to not only keep getting minutes and keep getting uh, more experience, but it's a way for them to come home and play in front of friends and family uh, because the, the reality of the situation is a lot of these guys have gone away to the States for college. Uh, and even for high school. So they haven't really had the opportunity to play at home in a long time. Uh, and this lets them come back home. Uh, and as much as we are a, a basketball league, we really try to wrap around it a, a, a great entertainment experience at home. Obviously last year was a little different with the, with the pandemic, but uh, we look forward to having fans back in the stadium and continuing to deliver uh, really great experiences for our fans. So uh, part of my duties and responsibilities as the director of operations is uh, to oversee all the day-to-day -day operations of our marketing and public relations uh, branches, as well as any of our communications or, or community engagement pieces. Uh, this also includes player relations. I'm kind of spread, uh, spread out. I like to say that I'm everything except for ticket sales. Um, so it, I'm kind of uh, in, a, in a couple buckets there. Uh, so a lot of my, uh, a lot of my duties in, involved a lot of writing, a lot of speaking uh, and, and liaising with with media outlets uh, and just trying to be the, the one of the creative presences here in the office. Um, I help out with our with our budget when we're forming that at the beginning of the year. This goes into you know where we're spending money throughout the year. Uh, I'm implementing our brand strategy, anything that you see coming out of our social media channels uh, or anything that's written uh, from our team perspective is 99.9% .9 of the time coming from from my laptop, um, we're uh, you know we're based in Saskatoon, but we want to have a strong presence throughout the province. So it's a lot of uh, communicating with media members down in Regina, uh, up north in PA, and and kind of all over the province. Um, and and that's that's you know in a nutshell kind of what I do. I do all their community relation functions. So whether that's going for school visits. Um, or just uh, tours with the team. You know, in our, our first year, Taste of Saskatchewan asked us to have a couple of our guys be celebrity chefs. Uh, so I was their little, uh, their little chaperone for that, uh, for that experience. Uh, and a lot of research. Obviously, our season only lasts about four months. So there's a lot of time where we don't have players in market. 
Uh, so that's uh, a time to continue to learn and continue to grow and implement new new techniques and new trends that uh, we think will be efficient in our market uh, to get the word out about our games. Uh, here are some pictures uh, from for the last couple seasons. Obviously, on the left there, that's when we won the championship. That's here in Saskatoon. Uh, and on the right, that was this past season when we played a, a bubble tournament out in St. Catharines, Ontario. Uh, and you can see me there at the bottom right talking to our head coach. Uh, it, it looks like he's rejecting to give me a fist bump, but I think I was just making a pretty strong point to him at that time, probably asking him to come do a, an interview after our warm-ups. Uh, so some skills or traits that I find that are useful in this, in this job is uh, written and verbal communication. That's the biggest one. That's one I use the most. I, I, I wish I could track how many words I write in a week uh, because it's, it's quite a bit. Uh, you have to be adaptable. Obviously, this is a very fast-paced environment. Um, things change very quickly. No two days are alike. Uh, so being able to adapt and change on the fly uh, is important. Uh, case in point, last year, we were planning our second season. We were coming off the championship. Uh, super exciting. We thought we would leverage all that, uh, all that goodwill we had built up and then uh, the pandemic hit and you know you just have to pivot and adapt and, and go from there. Uh, attention to detail is a big one. Obviously, we were working with a lot of guys' livelihoods and their stats. Um, so making sure that we're telling the right story there um, have to be extremely organized, especially in a, in a role such as this in a smaller professional team where you're taking on several different roles. Uh, you kind of have to separate each one, um, you know, to, to not get them confused. Uh, I put storytelling in there just because as a, a marketing communications person, you want to sell your story of, you know, what are the interesting storylines for games? What's interesting about our players to try to get that attraction in from the general project, uh, the general population. Um, project management, again, kind of goes back to the organization, the attention to detail. There's a lot of things on the go, whether you're starting up a, you know, a kids club or you're doing a school visit or you have to go uh, kind of administer all the tax forms for the players during a training camp. Uh, there's a, a lot of things on the fly. Uh, now in, in my new role as director of operations, I've, I've taken on more of a leadership role. I have interns coming in uh, every semester. So overseeing the work that they're doing. Um, I think a big one, not just for this role, but for any job is interpersonal skills, just being able to work with people from uh, a variety of different backgrounds, uh, whether that's within your own team or that's working with media in my, in my, uh, in my role or with our athletes. Uh, time management, again, um, it's a it's a busy workload. It's uh, there's not a ton of downtime, so being able to manage your time effectively is key. Uh, same with being self driven. It, there are times where uh, you know in the off season, specifically September, it's it's a tiny bit slower. So trying to find new initiatives and new trends that you can hop on and and adapt for your own team is paramount. Uh, able to work in the team setting goes without saying. Uh, I I put in Photoshop and, and video editing as an asset. These are you know, skills that I didn't have coming into this role, um, but they're skills that I've uh, luckily been able to develop while in this role. It's a, it's a big asset as a, a marketing person in general, but especially in sports to be able to uh, not only capture content, but to be able to produce it and turn it around in a timely fashion. So again, with a lot of the stuff I do on our social media accounts, a lot of that is built out by myself uh, using Photoshop. Um, I think uh, uh, an important trait to have is that you want to be passionate about what you're doing, regardless of if it's in sports or, or elsewhere, uh, you want to be passionate about what you do. Uh, so it, uh, that old adage of if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. Uh, it's similar here. And then finally, public speaking ability uh, and the ability to engage with local media. A lot of what I do is, is booking press conferences and non-pandemic times, uh, whether that be to announce new players or to announce our coach or GM. Uh, so being able to, you know, engage with media from across the province to kind of attend a press conference and then introducing that press conference is a, is a key factor there. Uh, so our facility, we, I would say that my, my time is split between three main areas. Uh, in the off season, I'm always downtown for the most part, unless we have a community event. Uh, but during the season, I kind of split my time during, between the Sastel Center where we play our home games uh, and our practice facility, which... Uh, which in our first season was at the University of Saskatchewan. Um, so between those three, I'm, I'm 
kind of traveling uh, between those three at all times. And then any community visit. So if we're doing school visits up north or, you know, we've done school visits in, in Albany, we've done some in Regina, uh, plenty in Saskatoon. Uh, I'm there for every one of those as the uh, marketing and communications person. And I'm taking pictures, taking videos of, of the guys engaging with the kids. Uh, so these are just a, a few more pictures. There's our office the outside right downtown. Uh, that's an example of a press conference. Uh, I believe we did that one at the Sastel Center. Uh, that was me in the bubble tournament. As you can see, part of my job is, is running a social media account. So I'm sending out some tweets there from, from the balcony, uh, just waiting for the game to kick off. And then uh, that's me during the home game here in Saskatoon during our first year, uh, just communicating with the rest of our, our front office staff to make sure that our game day is going to plan. Uh, and I have some videos here. So this is another example of, of the type of stuff I'm doing behind the scenes uh, and kind of gives uh, a nice inside look to what, uh, what uh, a behind the curtain look at uh, what a professional team is like. So I think the first one's during warmups, the second one's uh, one of our players' birthdays, and then the third one is a typical ending to one of our practices. So I'll just uh, give it a run here. As you can see, all our guys are a little shy. They're a little timid. A little awkward. This is uh, And then uh, a typical practice here. So that's uh, that's some of the fun stuff that I get to uh, that I get to see and I get to deal with there. Uh, rewards of the occupation. It's a, a a really fulfilling job. You get to work in a very fast paced and fun environment. Uh, I I can sincerely say that I love my job. I I uh, you know we we often talk at home about if I'll ever get out of sports and at this moment in time I I don't think I would. I I'm too used to the pace uh, and I have a lot of fun with what I do. I'd say no two days are alike. Things change constantly, even in the off season. Um, days are very different as new things develop and new things comes up. Uh, you get to experience things many people won't. I get to, you know, travel to the bubble in, in St. Catharines, and I haven't been able to travel to any away games yet, but, uh, but hopefully this year. Uh, we have teams across Canada, and that's in, in Fraser Valley, so in Abbotsford, BC. We have a team in Edmonton. Obviously, we're here in Saskatoon. Then there's teams in, in St. Catharines, Guelph, Hamilton, and Ottawa, and soon to be Montreal in 2022. So we're really expanding. We want to get to 12 teams um, nationwide eventually, uh, and hopefully that, uh, that comes with a little more travel for, for myself. Um, for me, it's really rewarding knowing fans are going home happy. Uh, I really enjoy my job uh, managing social media because I get to see kind of raw, unfiltered uh, reactions from people good and bad, you know, when we lose a game, it's not so much fun to read through those, but when we're winning or when we're signing these marquee players, it's really exciting to see how excited fans are uh, and really rewarding for me to see that, uh, you know, our efforts here in the office uh, are being met with, you know, happiness and joy. And you get to meet a lot of interesting people. Uh, you know, I've met the, one of the guys who, who effectively started the Toronto Raptors, uh, who I now consider a mentor, um, he works, uh, he's the president of the Hamilton franchise. Uh, and you kind of get to meet these, these really interesting people that you might not meet uh, necessarily in any other, in any other job. Um, and of course, one of the biggest rewards is, is winning a national championship. And, and I should be getting a ring pretty soon is what I'm, what I'm hearing. Uh, some of the challenges, the, the not so fun stuff is that the hours are long. Uh, obviously sports don't start and stop at nine to five Our games are usually in the evening. So a typical, you know, weekday game, a Thursday day, a Thursday night game, I would come into the office from probably nine to nine 30, go over to the stadium to get it set up until noon, come back to the office, make sure everything's prepped uh, media wise, make sure they know where they're going and they know all the storylines for the games. Um, post on social media about the game and then, uh, you know, head over there for 4.30 and then effectively work until 
until the game ends at 9, 9.30, and then write up the post-game recap. Uh, so I'm getting out of there around 11, 11.30. Uh, in the bubble, we usually had two games a day. So typically my, my days would start around 7, be at the stadium by 9, uh, work until midnight, eat supper at 12.30, and get back to the hotel around 1.30 or 2, uh, which was uh, quite the lifestyle to be living at that time. Uh, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't trade it. Uh, the pay isn't as high as other professions. Obviously, sports is a, a career where a lot of people want to work. Uh, so with that being the case, the pay uh, isn't necessarily as high because they know they can find somebody else that will do the job for a little bit less. Um, there's very tight deadlines. Obviously, you're, you're on the national level, on the national stage. Uh, so you have to make sure that you're turning things around in a timely fashion and and the expectations are quite high for that. So you want to be efficient with what you do and diligent in your work. Uh, and lastly, work-life balance is, is difficult to control. This kind of alludes to the long hours, uh, especially during the season, you know, uh, you're not as home as much as you may necessarily want to be. Our season operates in the summer. So you definitely kind of uh, have summer fly by and, and weekends are kind of sacrificed to your work, uh, typically when we're playing. Uh, however, I, I find that all the all the pros outweigh the cons uh, in this scenario. So I'll talk a little bit about my journey. Uh, I thought I had flipped this. Um, these are some of the the teams I'd interned with uh, prior. Um, I'll talk about my education. I think on the next slide. So I did an internship with the Vancouver Whitecaps, where I, I worked in player relations. That's really where I got uh, my start in my role here. Uh, with the National Lacrosse League, their head office is based out of Philadelphia, where I worked for a year. I did uh, an internship in communications, which uh, evidently is a, a massive role of what I do now. Uh, and then I spent a, a short little stint with the Saskatchewan R Rough Riders in their partnerships department. And then uh, the Saskatchewan Rattlers started and they took a look at my credentials, got a hold of me, and I've been here ever since. Uh, so three years. Um, I must have not included my education slide. Uh, anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll just talk to it. I started uh, my post-secondary education at the University of Regina. Uh, I have uh, two degrees from the U of R, uh, one in kinesiology and health studies. Uh, it's a bachelor of human kinetics, and I have a bachelor in sport management as well. Uh, after my bachelor's uh, in sport management in 2016, when I graduated, I went, uh, got accepted to Temple University, which is based in Philadelphia. And I did a two years master's program in sport business there. Uh, Philadelphia was a, a really great place for me to, to grow and learn. Uh, you can see I was the, the graduation speaker there on the left. Uh, uh, I got to see the, the Eagles win the Super Bowl, which is a great experience and, and talk about a great time to be a, a sport business student in the city of Philadelphia. And then that bottom picture there at the Phillies game, I think that was the day before one of my finals. Uh, which is uh, much to the chagrin of my parents when I tell them that I was going to baseball games before uh, grad school finals, but uh, I think I did pretty okay. Uh, the sports business world, there's a lot of opportunities just because it's, it's highly competitive. Um, with that being said, obviously, it's a, it's a pretty tight-knit community, so it's, it's tough to kind of get that initial crack into the business. However, once you get your foot in the door, what I've found is that the sports world is very small. Uh, I can actually trace back getting this job to my internship in Vancouver, uh, just from people that knew each other. Um, the chance for advancement is quite high just because the turnover rate is pretty high. You know, as much as people stay in sports, sometimes, uh, you know, the, the allure of having better work-life balance takes over uh, and they get out of that job. So the, the ability to advance is quite quick. Uh, I've advanced to a director role in, in after my second year here, which is, uh, you know, not unheard of in other industries, but definitely a little more rare. Um, uh, this job, you know, it's easily transferable. You're, you're dealing with uh, an experience as opposed to a, a, for say, a product. So once you know how to market an experience, I think you can market uh, just about anything else, whether that be in the entertainment or, or other marketing industries. Um, related industries or related occupations that I found were social media manager, director of marketing, communication specialist, et cetera. You can kind of take any skills that you learn here and, and apply them uh, wherever you may go. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll open it up to any questions. 
was, that was pretty, that was really real good, Kurt, uh, Raul. Thank you. I was just going to call you Garcia. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the one question I had was when you go back to, you don't have to go back, but when I think back to that uh, picture you had of you game day with the headphones on and stuff like that, you said uh, you're busy doing that. I've seen you at some games and that, and you look, you look really busy at game time. You know, you'd almost, I mean, from, from the outside looking in, you almost think that it's uh, it's a time for you to sit back and just enjoy the game. But obviously, it's, can you kind of tell me a little more about what what really goes on during game day in, in, in your job kind of thing? But, yeah, for sure. So our headsets are all connected uh, between the media booth, uh, the people operating the Jumbotron, and our, our game clock desk. Okay. Uh, so at the game doc clock desk, we have someone who's running the games, uh, essentially running the script. So uh whenever play isn't happening they're saying hey we have you know uh, a fan shot from half court in in the next time out uh so that cues me to go grab that fan um and bring them down to the court and get them all set up and then pass them on to to somebody else that can uh get them queued up for that activation is what we call it uh and in addition to that i'm getting you know constant uh emails from our, our graphic designer sending me graphics that, you know, the quarter is ended, here's the score, here's the graphic, and then I have to go in and, and post it across all our social media platforms. So it's definitely, it's, it's definitely a hectic time. Our, our bubble tournament kind of let me take a step back from that game day role. Obviously, we have a very small team here, so everybody has to help out in some capacity. Uh, but, uh, but in the bubble, I was mostly just doing social media stuff and writing. Uh, so a little more, uh, a little bit of a slower pace than than having a home game for sure. Yeah, I guess yeah, in the bubble, there's not so much fan engagement on this. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because basketball, you know, game time is, there's lots going on, got whistles, timeouts, and halftime and all that stuff. So that's part of your role is to oversee all of that too. Then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we try to have uh, a, a second of action during every minute of the game. So uh, just trying to manage logistically what that looks like uh, game over game. Um, chances for advancement in the in the pro sport world. I mean, you mentioned it's kind of a lot of it's get your foot in the door and contact. So you know, what are you know, this is a not a fledgling league, but it's a it's a it's a young league. What do you you know? What do you perhaps see for chances for growth? Uh, you know, from here. You know, I'm not saying anything, what's your plan, but I mean, you know, where could a person where could a person go? Yeah, I mean, you could really go anywhere. Like, if you if you want to stay in sports, you can definitely take a step uh, to one of the, the big four leagues, the NHL, the NBA, the NFL, the MLB. Uh, if you want to keep working in sports but kind of want maybe a, a step back in terms of intensity, I think university sport is a, a fantastic avenue for that. Um, or, you know, for for me, I, I mean, I've been here for three years and, and it's not in common for – for people to reach out, just seeing if you're ready to move on yet uh, to a different role. I haven't been quite ready yet, uh, but there's definitely interest. And, and once you start kind of making a name for yourself, that interest keeps keeps growing. Um, I think that's a big appeal of taking a, a sports job in maybe a smaller league is that you kind of get to be a, a big fish in a smaller pond and really make a name for yourself, which is uh, originally why I took this role. And I've just happen to, to fall in love with the league and what it stands for ever since. Uh, but I think, yeah, it's, it's easy to move up, not easy, but I think there's opportunities to move up uh, and there's definitely opportunities to kind of do a, a lateral move into another industry um, and continue to, to succeed there. I can see where those, that skill set would could go to other industries for sure. Yeah, exactly. Well, I have a question as a student that's interested in sports um, yep. What would you recommend? How would they get involved? I know you've got a, um, you know, some kinesiology behind you. Um, mm -hmm. Is that normally the route a student would or should consider, um, you know, getting into the realm of potential positions or jobs within the sports industry? Yeah, I think I think the two most common ways to to go about it is to uh, to either go into business school into, or to a sport management program. Um, from there, you know. You, a sport management program, I like to say, is essentially a business school, but all the examples are sports related. Uh, so for me, that was uh, was more appealing for sure. Um, but, you know, I, I, there's a lot of people that just have a communications background or, or just have a, a marketing background that uh, end up succeeding in the sports industry. Um, but, yeah, I, I think those would be my 
my two recommendations, business school or a sport management program. And there's, you know, tons of sport management programs now across the country. The U of R has a, a strong one. The U of A has one. Uh, there's a pile in, in Ontario. So there's definitely a lot of opportunity for that. So once they would have that degree or that diploma management, what would be their next step then to get involved or to get hired? You said it, you know, it's, it's basically who you know in the industry, right? Yeah, hundred percent is it's uh, a lot of volunteering and a lot of internships. I think I had uh, on my, on my slide there, I think I did three, four internships uh, prior to landing this job, a few that I didn't include on there. Um, and it's just, you know, getting your foot in the door and, and making a really positive impression when you're in those, in those roles. Um, because like I said, I think I can trace getting this job back to my first internship with the white caps, um, just by a matter of who knew who, uh, and, and tracing it back to here. So it's just, uh, you know, just getting your face out there. It's, it's unfortunate uh, or not unfortunate, but I know I was always, uh, tired to hearing that I should volunteer at, at sporting events. Uh, but it, it really is the way to, to get your face out there and get your name out there more effective than, than anything else. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Those, those internships that you spoke of, Earl, are they, are they, are they part of the university training program or those are just teams are often, you know, often looking for interns just, just to, as a, to help them out? Yeah, a little bit of both. I think the only one on there that I did as a school requirement was the White Caps one. Um, but the, the rest were just, self sought out and uh you know sometimes they're unpaid or or the pay is quite low but again it's just a way to get your your name out there and your foot in the door and and get some really great experience hey that's uh, i don't have any more questions anybody else that's on have any questions um i'm good here that was a, a very good presentation thank you so much for all for sharing those um I loved all of your, um, you know, those, the, the traits that, you know, you would have or what you recommend students, because a lot of those traits, a lot of those things can be built, be built in high school, right? hundred percent. Yeah. And, you know, that's truly where it starts too. So that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. What I like, Rose, is, uh, you know, kids are, are involved with sports and you've got an example now uh, of basketball for the kids in Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. which is awesome. And, you know, just because you don't make it as a professional athlete uh, doesn't mean you, you can, uh, you have to stop loving the game and being involved. So uh, hats off to you for getting this started in the ground floor. And I look forward to seeing where this league is going to go. Thank you. Yeah. It'll be awesome. Hopefully you get some down in Regina. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I've been pushing for training camp in Regina now for three years and it's, it's falling on deaf ears, but, uh, but I keep pushing for it. Good deal. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks so much, Raul. Uh, appreciate you doing this. And uh, I think we'll end it at that then. Okay. Thanks. Thank you so much.